Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a meeting of the Cultural Council. My name is Angela Mills, and I work for town manager, Paul Bachman. Um, at this time, I'd like to recognize our co-chairs, Matt and Julianne. Matt, I will make you host, and I wish you all a great meeting. Thank you, Angela. Hey, everybody. Um, we are recording now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll read the script, and then we'll do a roll call, and then we'll hop right into our deliberation meeting on Thursday, November 9th. So let's see, this meeting is um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting is allowed to be conducted via remote means. Um, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by attending via Zoom. No in-person attendance of me members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we're unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post the recording on the town Amherst Media um, YouTube channel uh, shortly after the meeting is concluded and members of the public may um, access it there. So let's see, we'll do a quick roll call, make sure everybody can hear and be heard. Christy? Hi, hi everyone. Hello, Eleanor? Hi, and I just wanted to say, Sylvie, let me know she'll be a few minutes late, but that she's on her way. Thank you. Rachel? I'm here. Hello. Cody? Uh, hi. Um, I do have to have Okay. Thank you, Cody. And Julie? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Hello? Yep, yeah, we hear you. Okay. Fabulous. Oh, good, thanks. <laughs> Welcome. It sounds like you might have a little delay. Um, okay, so we will jump into our deliberations. I do see one um one attendee in the participant box. So if you are observing, you're welcome to observe. And if you'd like to make comment, we'll hold for a minute for public comment right now. Just use a little hand raise feature if you would like to make a comment. Okay, um, not seeing anything. I will go ahead and jump in. Um, and we're just gonna continue, continue our process as usual. So I'm gonna jump down, I believe we are, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I check with Julianne, I think I'm not wrong. Um, I believe we're at, uh, Item number 24 in your se the sequence number 24, which is Kim Chin Gibbons is the applicant name, um, underrepresented genres of music, residency, and showcase. Does that sound right to everybody else? Okay. So I'll read the brief project description and then we can open it up for dis uh, discussion. Um, was somebody consistently serving as the timer I, I'll do that. I was just about to ask you if you want me to do that. This is Rachel. Okay, Thank so you, I'll Rachel. start now. Yeah, go ahead. Is it seven minutes? Five. Okay, sounds great. Okay, I'll start now. What, what makes a show to remember? These days, live music is harder than ever to execute, especially high production acts getting their start post-pandemic. We aim to do something very different, a roller coaster of progressive rock featuring counterpart metal, funk, shoegaze, and classical music influences. We aim to do a three-day tech residency with the band Sunset Mission. Project arrived slash continued from our three-day residency in 2022 at City Space in East Hampton. With the show live streamed and in person at the end of the third day, showcasing unique genres of music with other bands at the Drake and Amherst. This gives musicians of unconventional music a real opportunity and voice, and the event will be accessible to people of all ages, folks with disabilities, and the proposed live stream, live stream element will be available to the in, immunocompromised or those unable to join in person. Um, and then they do include one piece of supporting um, literature, which is from last year when they used the cityscape in East Hampton as a, as a venue for this. But I note that there's no confirmation from the Drake that they're able to use the space, um, nor is there a specific date. So I'll open it up for discussion. Does anybody want to champion them for full funding? 
or or to the contrary want to um say that they're not eligible um i, I do think it's a great event is showcases okay, all genres of music. Um, I just again with the trend with no that they in, in this case, um. Not even a confirmation from the break just concerns me, but I will support Portugal. One thing I will know is that they they set aside fifteen hundred dollars for venue rental, so. You know they're not assuming that they can get a free rental, and I don't know if they actually called and got that quote or not. Um, if folks are comfortable, we, we you know we certainly could follow up and find out if you know if if that if that's a real quote, then I guess I'm more inclined to provide some funding. If it's if it's sort of a number that's sort of pulled out of the air, then I think it doesn't really qualify. All right, so I'm. I'm, as you know, driving, but there's, is there anyone who can look at and tell us what, what the date concept even is at the moment? Because April, you know, no location and no date sometime in, in April or and it's April, for how many days? April at, April at the Drake. But no confirmation, and we don't know if that's an actual rental fee that they found out, or if it's just something that they um, were projecting, you know, guesstimating. And yeah, and what's the total budget, and what are they asking for from us? Five thousand is the total budget, and they are asking um, us for five thousand. Did they ask any other cultural councils? Is there any benefit to any of the regional area? Uh, no, no, there's no, there's no other co cultural councils listed on the document. Um, they do talk about income coming from ticket sales. However, I do not see, um, oh, $10 cover, $10 live stream ticket with special discounted prices, for example, $5 for students and 65 and up. Yeah. Um, I don't know how close we are to time on this, but I, I think we're going to have to come back to this one unless I think there's too much we don't know. It's going to need more discussion. Yeah, 30 seconds. Well, I think that that's, we that's are, I, yeah, I think that we're, we're generally sort of supportive of partial funding, but I think a follow-up email is needed to find out about the, the venue rental. I mean, you know, do they actually know they can rent the Drake for the time they need for 1500 bucks? So I'll make a note to do that. Um, any other comments last minute before before we move on okay i'm going to go down to our next item which is um club o inc club o holistic career development um the date range here is november this now until march of next year they're asking for five thousand again um their total budget is five thousand, and they're asking for five thousand from us. Um, and the description is: At Clubo, we serve as a universal safe space for self advocacy, resiliency, community engagement, leadership, and mentorship for youth aged eleven to twenty one in Greater Springfield. Collaborating with public schools and community partners, we've developed a holistic career development approach that bridges the home school gap through our curriculum. Students gain life skills from BIPOC business owners, educators, and professionals. In two years, we've graduated over 250 scholars and are recognized by the Springfield Empowerment Zone Partnership. Our certificates equate to community service hours, enhancing future job prospects. We've expanded into after-school programs, summer camps, and conducted HBCU college tours. 
For this project, we aim to open up HBCU tours to Amherst High School students, host holistic career development nights, and offer valuable experiences to local youth and families. And just scrolling down for a quick moment, I'll give you the budget breakdown. Um, so $1,500 for staffing, $1,500 for materials, $1,500 for scholarships, $500 for venue rental. Um, and there are no letters of support that I see. Uh, partnerships with Amherst College professor, UMass Engineering, um, Alicia Walker, assistant director of, oh, Alicia Walker is the assistant director of Club O. Uh, Kirk Morris is president of Citizens of World Inc. Um, and a few other groups. Christy, please. I don't think it fits our brief. I don't, I mean, they're taking cultural to mean human, like human support. It sounds like a wonderful organization, but it doesn't sound like what we do. But unless I'm missing something. Cody? That's what I also know the Omar see that it's not really the old great mission, but it's nice. It'd be different if it was a creative project involved, but it's a tour. Does anybody um, think that it might meet our I, guidelines? Um, I, I was going to agree that I also have concerns about it meeting our, our guidelines, everything that Christy and Cody said, but also I don't recall that there were even any letters from Amherst necessarily asking for this. So, um, and I, I seem to recall it, it was a, there wasn't a concrete schedule, it's very conceptual, but I don't think it meets our, our guidelines. Right, I think this is their, this is their programming. You know, this is their, pro it's an ongoing program. And the, the idea would be that they would be bringing it to us. Um, but I agree, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look through our um, arts activities, you know, directed to support arts and nurture arts activities in the community by seeking private. So um, I, I have to agree with Cody and others that I don't necessarily see the um, arts and culture benefit here. Okay, so um, going once, going twice, I think we could probably move on uh, unless anybody wants to advocate otherwise. Okay, we're going to move on down to number uh, 26, which comes from the Collaborative for Educational Services, Amherst Kindergarten Readiness Music Performance, music to happen in March of 2024, Amherst Elementary Schools, uh, the total budget is $1,675. The grant request from us is $350. Projected number served is 30. And I'll read the description. Families with rising kindergartners will come together to create community through music, movement, and exploration of local resources. The Amherst Kindergarten Readiness event will, will feature a performance by musician and puppeteer Liam Hurley. This local children's performer will engage kids with interactive songs, movement activities, dance, and guided rhythm to delight and unite participants. At the event, families will play yard games and make art together. They will also receive information about the Amherst Public Schools Kindergarten Program, learn about child development, and peruse the resource fair tables to learn more about local services. Families will each receive a free packet of kindergarten readiness materials, including books, art supplies, toys, and an activity packet to help prepare for the transition to kindergarten. So anybody want to champion this one? Seems great. What's the budget on this one again? Uh, the total budget is 16 and change, and they're asking for 350 from us. 
they have a nice letter of support, I think, in there. That's letter of support from the superintendent of schools. It seems great. I and really nice. event... Go ahead, Christy. Oh, I was just going to say it's an event where I would think a lot of people with little kids are going to be there and seems like a good thing and it's not a big ask yeah it's a reasonable ask it's cultural it's it's got arts it's, and i mean I, I about teared up having three kids of my own and remember going to kindergarten to begin with and how you know how much you want your family there with you and it's not all new on that day and this just seems lovely really lovely and a little infusion of arts and culture into the sort of step up to kindergarten day. I, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm. advocate a full fund out 350 here. Okay. Me too. Oh, hopefully All we right. have it. All right. Let's move on to number 27. Um, this is Robert Camo. Camo. Um, this is the South Amher Cemetery and Commons Historical Tour. Date is June 1st of next year, 24. Um, Project location is in the South Amherst uh, Cemetery and South Amherst Commons. The total budget is $170, all of which is being requested from us. Projected target or number served is 1,000. And let me read the, um, the South Amherst Cemetery and Commons historical tour will be a walking tour of the cemetery first and then the commons area. Gravestones will be explained and examined with stress on the first inhabitants of the area. Then the houses on the commons will be discussed. The makers and their architectural styles will be examined. So let me see, coming into the um, report a little bit, there's a articulation of cemetery tours and the popularity. Robert Camo, I hope I'm saying that right, um, has led historical tours in Holyoke, South Hadley and Chicopee for 10 years. Under his initiative, he started the historical tours of Great Holyoke. Greater Holyoke, which gives free public tours and some paid private tours. His webpage is holyokecanatour.org um, with information. He was a high school science teacher for 18 years, has a master's in physics. The Holyoke Preservation Trust has hosted all my tours for the past 10 years. Um, wow. Well, this is a cool one. <laughs> Not to bias the discussion, but it's, that seems neat. Comments? I like it. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty small ask. I don't know. I actually was very randomly on like a cemetery tour this summer that I kind of just happened into. And it was like a surprisingly amazing experience. So I think if we could fully fund it, it seems really great to me. I agree. I agree. And it's a really reasonable ask. He also says um, he's applying to similar, for other similar projects, he's applying to South Hadley, Holyoke, Chicopee, East Hampton, and Granby. So I think he's really um, expanding. Let me just see, is there, is it, is it free, no cost to any participants? Well, this yeah, is just- the, the other ones yeah. that he's, the other ones he's applying for are totally separate grants and events. Right. So this yep. is all for just, and it's a small ask for just this yep. one event. I looked at the budget. I can't remember what it was, but it was also reasonable items. Yeah, printing out handouts and things like that. Um, and then $145 for himself. But that seems that seems low for, for the amount of research and preparation one must put into a, a cemetery tour. So I think I, I'm hearing a general consensus to fully fund this one. Um, and and I this is one of these ones I'll probably mark my own calendar because I really want to, I would like to attend that. Um, okay, so I'll move on to 28, and please, if I'm going too fast, don't hesitate to stop me because I have multiple tabs open. Um, 28 is Dear Ella is the applicant name. It's an outdoor concert. Um, summer, summer 2024 is the date range. Location is Amherst, Massachusetts. Total budget is 700. Request from us is 700. Um, Projected target number served, 150. We propose giving an outdoor concert in Amherst in the summer of 24. Our music is family oriented and will bring a festive and upbeat atmosphere. Um, so let me go into the PDF here a little bit, see if I can find a little bit more information here. Um, 
We see our concerts as supporting local shops and giving to the town. They have some links. Um, they list the artists. Uh, Annie Patterson co-created the world-renowned songbook, songbook Rise Up Singing. Um, Anne Percival is a member of Wild Asparagus. Mary Witt is a singer and a bass player for the O-Tones. Um, as of today, no other organizations are involved. Um, salaries, $300, $600 for the, across three performers, $200 each, uh, $100, we provide our own sound. So um, no in-kind support. And I believe it's, they say it was free. Um, so, uh, okay, there's a photograph of the three of them, um, but I don't think there's any real other specifics other than that. So I open it up for discussion. I mean, no real location, no date, it's a trend I feel, but just, I, I do support portal, let's get that out there, but it's just like, you should really have collaborators or be honest with doing it by ourselves. I just feel all we are looking um, for partners still sounds a little disorganized. That's just me. I don't think it's just you, Cody, and that uh, it, it sounds really lovely. I'd, I'd like there to be some sort of letter of support, somebody who's asking them to, to come and, um, you know, to have to go back to the majority of the grantees and say where and when, where and when, where and when is, is, is problematic. Um, but it sounds really nice. Uh, I can't remember what the whole ask was for it. $700. Does anyone have the $700 and it's for approximately how many hours of entertainment It's a single concert. Okay, so a couple hours or so. Okay. I mean, one of the things our survey is showing us is that people are asking for things like this, you know, but again, it's really hard when our requirement is to have a date and location and everything else sounds great, but it's all, you know, up in the air. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm willing to work with somebody who says that they'd like you know, they would like to do it at the Drake, but but if you just want to say outside and some, you know, uh, to me, there's there's just there is just there isn't enough here to consider this an actual feasible, you know, thing. Oh yeah, and I seem to recall I did dig into this one because I, you know, it sounded good and then it let me down and it was like, oh well, their their plan B, if I'm remembering correctly, is that they'll just have it at somebody's house. So, I mean, I think for the have public benefit to Cody's point, it needs to be more structured, more organized. And, you know, we're not in the business of outdoor house party entertainment. And I know that that's not what they're suggesting. They're saying we don't have the money, but we need, you know, the events to be more official. Yeah. I mean, to do a public, you know, it's not a, it's not a big process to get a permit from the town for, you know, a small park or something like that. So to do a public outdoor concert is, you know, is a wonderful thing, but it does take some degree of, you know, planning and coordination. Your work time. Okay. So I, I'm just going to briefly say, I personally, I would say that this does not meet our criteria because it, it's just, it's not enough detail. It's not even a beginning of enough detail, I guess. I, uh, I, I agree. Okay. Sadly. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, it's a, it's a lovely, you know, sentiment, but we just need a little bit more than that. Okay. So moving on to, um, Number 29, this is um, 
Kamaya Diggs is uh, Kamaya Diggs and Friends fourth annual holiday show, and Kamaya is uh, the uh, applicant name. It's in December 2024. It's at the Drake. Uh, total budget cited is one thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars. The grant request is one thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars. Projected or target number served is eight hundred fifty people. And then I'll read the um, description. The Kamaya Diggs and Friends annual holiday show started in winter of 2021. Starting at the parlor room in North Northampton, the show has sold out for two years in a row and is anticipated to sell out at the Drake in December 24. The jazz style show features Kamaya Diggs and a trio of local musicians plus special guests. The special guests are the heart of the show with representation from all corners of the Valley's vibrant music scene. As an artist of color, it's an opportunity for me to support other upcoming artists of color by giving them a platform to perform. The show also includes a partnership with local charities and 93.9 The River. Community members who donate to the annual toy drive will be entered into a raffle to win tickets to the show. It's important to me that the show is focused on a holiday spirit. And while the songs are Christmas songs, the event is secular. Um, they do, within the PDF, they list a few more details that are probably worth um, sharing. And I believe Kamaya Diggs is a known commodity to us. I, I haven't I haven't looked it up, but I'm pretty sure we've given him grants before. Um, what was I, gonna, I was looking for? Um, oh, it's about potential special guest musicians that are not, the, the venue is not confirmed yet. Um, Potential special guest musicians also not confirmed. Wallace Field, Lux Deluxe, Naomi Nye, uh, Lexi Wedge, Mitali Banda, Elliot Lee Friesen. I plan to similar promotion. So, I mean, you know, it is a partnership with 93.9 The River. Um, most of the money goes to that would be $1,500 going to the special guest artists with another $475 going to decor and marketing. Um if I do not receive full funding, I will cut some guest artists. So uh, again, I mean, it doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the Drake confirmed, doesn't have a letter of support, but it is already an established institution. And um, I think, you, you, you know, is, excuse me, is, is a slightly different project. I'll open up for discussion. Quick question, did they budget to rent the Drake? No, I think I no. Great, let's go upstairs. Tickets will be twenty dollars in advance and twenty five at the door. Important information. Um. I support at least a partial funding. I've met Kamaya Dix before through um, Amherst College Radio, and I think that this would be a really cool event and one that I, I want to go to this year's version of, but I am a little bit confused about not budgeting for the Drake. Well, I think it's a for-profit gig. I mean, I think it's, you know, selling 20, 20 and $25 tickets. I think the, the Drake would be expected to book them is sort of how that would be, you know, like a like a professional musician. So it's not articulated super clearly in here. And some oftentimes our grants sort of are, you know, on the edge between um, you know, professional musicians and and sort of things that we're promoting. So I yeah, I mean I I I know, you know, the Kamaya Diggs is a pretty well established artist. Obviously, the river is like the main, you know, radio station for for rock music and you know, modern music in the valley. So I, I would certainly think that we, you know, sh we should try to partially fund it, but I, I would like to follow up and, and see if there is any confirmation from the Drake with them. I mean, I think it's, this is a fully baked proposal. It's just a detail that we tend to, many of our proposals don't have that detail of confirming the venue. And, and it's important, I think, to, to try to do that. Other thoughts? I, my last thought is just, 
I'd like to see grantees when they do have ticket sale um, budget, you know, and they're anticipating selling out that that's, you know, part, part of their budget. Um, maybe we need to more formally request that going forward or make it, make it clearer, you know, because we, we rarely get that. Yeah. It's an interesting space to be in when you have professional musicians who are selling tickets and obviously, you know, getting compensated by, by those sales. Um, and, and actually, I mean, you know, that, that is a, something that I, I don't think anybody wants to, you know, zero fund this, but I think it's a question that we should weigh when we're considering the partial funding is, you know, will our funding be a game changer for this grant? In other words, you know, is our funding essential to the, to this happening versus something else? And, um, you know, I think it's, it's good to show support for it, but I don't think that our funding, you know, I think the answer is no, our funding is not essential to this project. Right. Also so, I mean, we would, we would weigh that, right. If they're, they are collecting, um, tickets and whatever partial, how, how partial of it. Right. Um, okay. I think we're at time. Okay. I, I wanted to add that I was a little concerned that, you know, considering the sellout opportunity and the ticket sales, I found it a little strange that if our funding doesn't come through that guest artists get cut, that that's the only way that they're coming. So they're just cutting rather than managing. Oh, I read that a little bit. I thought okay, I, might, maybe I, might I, just read that. I, I read it, it to be, to just say that, that, you know, the, our funding would be there to, so that he, you know, who's getting paid for the, through the ticket sales can also pay additional folks to come in without having to take a, take a hit in his own budget. I mean, his own pocket, you know? Oh, Okay, um, I appreciate a different perspective. Thank you. Yeah, because he says I will cut some get like I will reduce the number of guest artists. I think that's how I, that's how I read that. Um, okay, so thank you, Rachel, for keeping us on track so well. Um, let's go to number thirty-one. So this is a known grantee empowerment through the arts. The project title is Habitat Habitat: The Animal's Point of View, which I love the title already. Um, project this one is theater. Uh, performance is happening this month, November 25th, 2023, at the Eric Carl. Their total budget is 2000 Grant request is $1,500. Uh, projected or target number serves 100 We are invited to be part of Environmental Eric Carl, a retrospective of his art relating to the planet. Our original show, Habitat, Habitat from the Animal's Point of View, full of stories from the animal's perspective, living in eight different ecosystems, ocean to desert, rainforest to the Arctic. The audience hears directly from animals and what they need and what they love. In costumes and masks, puppetry and song, we tell the stories of life as animals live today. Melting ice, invading neighborhoods looking for food, we look at how they lived in the past. Bears being able to scoop up salmon, puppets tell of not enough trees and flowering plants, Songs about love of the planet and oneself inspire us to act. An interactive display of the ecosystems covered in the play allow youth to learn ways to care for the animal's habitat and a way they can offer ideas about more than we can all do. Um, did I jump? Did I skip one? I yeah, did. I think we'll I'm so sorry. I will come back to Eli. Do you guys mind if we jump down to 31 for a second? Sounds good. Okay. All right. So we're going to skip. We're going to come back to Eli in a moment. My apologies. And of course, we know um, uh, Ezel Florentina or S Selinda Ezel is listed here. Um, and I'll just read a little bit more about this. Uh, target audience is families with young children. Playful show designed especially for this age group. Making the show free allows families in lower economic status to access the museum and show. Uh, museum is also on a regular bus route. The cost of participation would be free with the grant. Assuming, in other words, assuming we give our grant, donations are accepted and donated for specific animal rescue and support programs. Um, and then, so this is the important thing for folks who are not familiar with the ETA group. Um, ETA, the Rainbow Players are by nature a DEI organization. Our focus is inclusion and access at all levels. We're discussing ways to have the show interpreted for the deaf. At the end of the show, we will have some actors at the door interacting as the animal. Um, the show is free of charge. 
The Rainbow Players have been together for over 25 years, looking at issues relating to the environment and climate. Um, we devised this show, especially for a young audience, bringing in songs that are easily learned and taught. Um, Eric Carl is offering us $500 towards the 2000 needed. Um, new partners are students in the work study program. Oh, Amherst College and UMass interns working with scenery. Um, the museum will promote the show on their website and social media and handling the ticketing reservations and details. We'll promote the show on our website as well. Um, Chamber of Commerce, Greg's Doors, Amherst Community Connections. So they're very well established in the community. Um, let's see, $700 go to the acting troupe, $100 stipend for each actor, uh, $350 for the director, $50, $150 for the stage manager, musical director, uh, ASL interpreter set aside, which we've really encouraged folks to do for $250. Um, and then material rentals and props. Uh, other sources of in income would be their fall fundraising campaign. Um, access to Eric Carl is being offered beforehand so the group can become comfortable with the space. One scheduled rehearsal, uh, additional time in the auditorium free of charge. Um, if you don't get the full funding, we'll still perform. It'll still be offered free of charge. We would also still pay our actors and tech support. And we would accelerate our pursuit of local business sponsorships to cover a shortage of funds. And then there's a really nice, I encourage everybody to go, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there's a really nice rundown of all their many accomplishments. Um, and if folks are not familiar, oh, isn't this great? If folks are not familiar, there's, um, you know, uh, the Rainbow Players is a group of, you know, young adults and, and adults with intellectual impairments. And they do just tons of amazing creative activities. And there is a excellent an excellent letter of support from the director of education at the carl museum and that is enough out of me julie this is a a grant that is is done to the t it's yeah. it's how how we like them to be done <laughs> yeah this and we've funded it every year that i've been on the council for something I, I would say to fully fund if we have the funds, you know, it just really comes down to it. It is, it is a sizable ask, but it is all here and it's science and arts and culture and diversity. It's just everything. It's great, but it's, a, it's still a lot of money con considering, but I think it's great. I would, if I could, if we can. I'm going to mark them as a, as you know, a, a full fund preference, unless anybody wants to argue otherwise, obviously everything contingent on available funding, but I think, you know, it's really hard to see anything in this grant that doesn't align oh. with them. Yeah. Oh, fun and sing, please share, fun them regardless. But if we can't for fun, we share, do our very best. To find them partial. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to, I think we're going to mark this as one that we're really going to pursue. I mean, we're going to pursue full funding for. Um, and then let me back up with apologies up to number 30, which is Eli um, Elkus. Also, uh, somebody who's come in with us several times before. Um, Eli does musical storytelling and folk music at the farmer's market which ranges, you know, April through October and into November, in fact, um, I think this year. Total budget cited is 900 and the grant request is also, excuse me, is also 900. Um, and I will read the description. A series of three musical storytelling and folk music performances at the Amherst Farmers Market. Each performance will be three hours in length and will take place on three dates by myself and David between, oh, to be determined by myself and David between April and October 24. The program will feature my original works, songs and stories from my travelings, rekindlings of blue of folk and blues songs from the early 1900s in the Americana tradition of artists like Lead Belly, Carter Family, Memphis Jug Band, Bessie Smith and Woody Guthrie, interpretations of work by artists like Shel Silverstein, Malvina Reynolds, Jimmy Kennedy and Roger Miller, curated for the enjoyment of younger listeners. The performance material is intended to appeal to a diverse and intergener intergenerational audience. 
is layered in ways that young and old can enjoy, and is tailored impromptu to what the audience and moment requires. So I'll open up for discussion for a minute. I will say that, you know, Eli is pretty... Oh, go ahead, Cody, please. I think... Thinking about a budget and, you know, being a regular. Yeah, we should find on some level, but I say 900 is high. So I would say definitely not. Them. Other thoughts? That makes sense. I think I, I do. Yeah, just want to note the letter of support that says um, from the farmer's market that notes like that they're not only wanting him, they're planning on having him there. Um, and yeah, I, I get that 900 might be high, but I would I would like to fund this as much as we I can, I think. I would lean towards a high partial myself. I mean, I think it's, you know, it, it's a it's a nice cultural addition to the to a standing event and you know, tailored towards young children and families. And so, but I, I think I agree with Cody that, you know, we don't this is not a, a necessarily a full funded one. Although sometimes, you know, sometimes we we get into our last few meetings and we find that we are able to fully fund more than we expected. So I wouldn't rule it out, but I also wouldn't necessarily prioritize a hundred percent funding on this one. Yeah. I, I support a partial. Okay. Any other comment on uh, Eli? Okay, well, let's jump down to number 32. It's 6.15 now, so um, probably get through a few more. Jump down to number 32. This is Marshall Escamilla. Escamilla. Um, discover, ooh, discovering Dinosaurs in the Pioneer Valley, a, play, a place-based science podcast for kids. This project will be, place, will be a place-based audio experience available online for kids and families all around the world. But there will be several audio stops in Montague, Turners Falls, Greenfield, Deerfield, Amherst, Northampton, Gill, Hadley, Granby, South Hadley, Dolyoke, Chicopee, and Springfield. The audio provides listeners with an opportunity to explore further in person. Total budget cited is $28,725, and they are asking us for $1,200. Uh, projected or target number served is 40 Um and then I'll read the description. In partnership with New England Public Media, Tumble Media, the creators of the Tumble Science Podcast for Kids, will produce a place-based audio experience highlighting the rich history of dinosaurs in the Pioneer Valley. The Pioneer Valley boasts several sites along the Connecticut River that witness some of North America's earliest dinosaur findings. We plan to narrate this extraordinary journey through a series of 13 audio shorts ranging from one to three minutes, interviewing a diverse group of modern day and local experts. Though many of these discover discoveries were made in the 19th century, we will explore how they continue to be relevant to research today. These audio stories will be readily available through an interactive map on the NEPM website. As the Beneski Museum has nearly all the fossils found in the Pioneer Valley in its collection, Amherst is a crucial stop on this project. I. I may have to recuse myself here just because I am a super attendee of the Beneski and, and all things dinos in the valley, but I will try to maintain, um, you know, a degree of impartiality. Um, I'm going to scroll and I want to see, I, I'm guessing that this $28,000 budget uh, reflects a bunch of cultural council asks. I just want to confirm that. Um, yep. I would champion fully funding it if possible. Um, I think it's yep. it's amazing. They've applied to all those cultural councils. There is info about the Tumble project. Um, and there is a letter of support from NEPM. Wow. That is amazing. 
I would say at least high partial, you know, plus, high partial plus. Love it. Other comments? Yeah, no, I have one. Um, sorry, does somebody else want to speak first? No, 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 you go ahead, Rachel. Okay, so for the project and what it is, I um, agree with Christy um, on this one. And I think my comment is that since it is advertising or um, aspiring to be place-based, I just want to point out that in terms of how they're choosing to name the various um, locations and, um, um, you know, whether it's uh, place names, I, I, I would just have that question myself. And maybe that's not a criterion for our evaluation, but that's something that I have a question about. Is my point can clear? The statement? Can you just say the question again? My question is the names like things like Pioneer Valley, Amherst because these things were here well before these names were. So if they're claiming to be place-based, I personally have a concern about how they choose to name those places. But for the project itself, um, I love it. Like in terms of what they're aiming to do with the project. So because they're you know putting the place space, I would have a question and concern about how they choose to um, name these places. Well, I did confirm one helpful thing, which is those place names are the names of the places where the cultural councils are that they're asking for funding from. So I think that's that's one helpful reference to that. Um, Eleanor, were you going to make a comment? I was going to say I, I'm for it. Um, but yeah, I do get what you're saying, Rachel. I, I don't know if that's within the scope of like this part, but yes, I think that's a good point. Okay. All right. Um, it's 618. Want to do one more and then call it a night? Sound good? I know Cody's got to hop off in just a minute. Um, all right. This is number 33. Applicant name, Carrie Ferguson. Carrie Ferguson. We have fun to carry. Carrie Ferguson and the Grumpy Time Club Band. Uh, most likely summer of 24 TBD at the Jones Library, um, $700 budget cited, grant request $700, projected or target number served $200, um, interactive concert with positive message for children and families. This will be a live interactive music concert by Carrie Ferguson and the Grumpy Time Club Band for children and families hosted by the Jones Library in Amherst. The event will most likely be held at the Drake Theater, which is accessible in Amherst. Okay. Hosted by the Jones Library, but held at the Drake Theater. Okay, interesting. The Grumpy Time Club Band is Red, Gold, and Purple Family Music Party Band, which offers a horn section, youth musicians, and costume dancers, playing original music from Carrie's award-winning album, The Grumpy Time Club, plus some fun covers and new tunes. The band offers positive and uplifting funky folk pop that is highly danceable and fun for all ages. Song themes include LGBTQ youth and family pride, earth stewardship and love of nature, social justice and inclusivity, self-esteem and social emotional learning. And then jumping over into the PDF, uh, hosted by Jones, perhaps of the Drake. I'm curious if this is a consideration about the construction of the Jones or something. I'm a little confused about that part. Um, the Jones has invited Carrie and the Grumpy Time Band to play for the library. Deer Paths Nature School will help promote. Um, the money is to pay the, the four to six band members and dancers. Um, Supporting letter. They had 55 people last year. Yep. Does anybody remember offhand if we funded? this last year? I know it came in for us. Yes, we did fund it. I can probably pull that up. Mm. Too many tabs, too many tabs. <laughs> Ferguson, right? I, I would, my vote would be, um, it's not a huge ask. It's, I guess it's not a tiny ask, like high partial at least. Um, 
the, uh, you know, high partial plus if we had the money, everything, but, you know, 500, something like that, at least. Um, You're channeling us from last year, Christy. We gave him 550 last year. So there you go. <laughs> I, of course, I remembered. I remembered that. <laughs> of course you did. Nothing else going on. That's impressive. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with it and I'm not sure what the confusion about the Jones and the Drake is, but as Christy said, the letter of support from the Jones kind of, you know, that puts me at ease that the, it'll, they'll figure it out. So nobody wants to be grumpy about the grumpy time band. It's good. Yeah. And as far as I, I was on mute, so I couldn't chime in before this one, but it, I think it would behoove us if any folks can stay later enough to make a quorum that we don't all jump now because we're at which number now? Sure. Yeah, we can do one more. That's fine. I, I, I you know, <clears throat> I'd like to, to try to, to, I don't know how much t more time does everyone have? We I can know go to 630. Had yeah. To go. Hmm? yeah, we can go to 630. That's fine. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Um, uh, move on down. Uh, 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 Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Uh, Have a good night. Uh, okay. Number 34 is uh, Roseanne Fleischauer. I hope that I'm getting that right. It's another yarning one. It's great. Yarning around Massachusetts. Um, the date is 23 to 24. Location is in your town and statewide. Total budget is $500. Grant request is $500. Projected target is 2,500 people. And this is the description. Initially, it was a town-by-town -town application with teaching included in towns near to me, but now it is a bigger idea. Let's all join in the fund for 2324. I'll work with people in town to yarn bomb a prominent location in each town that participates with crochet pieces by me and other people in town. The installation would require some advertising to ask people for contributions of granny squares or small squares of crocheted and knitted fabric, which would then be sewn together by me to fit the tree, bike rack, or other designated lo location in town. Others, of course, could help with the setup. Not familiar with the concept? Wikipedia.org slash yarn bombing. <laughs> Using recycled yarn made from soda bottles and recycled fabric, I will create a series of crochet panels, which we can use to decorate benches, a tree, or other location in town that is suitable. Um, and then going over to the PDF here for a minute. I, mean, I don't mean to, I, I, I enjoy, I appreciate the spirit of this. That's, that's I guess, my the reason I'm chuckling. Um, and I, and of course, love yarn, yarn bombing as, as such. So this um, Roseanne has been teaching crochet since 2020 and was the crochet designer of the year in 2020. Wow. For the National Needle Arts Association. Since then, uh, my work has appeared in five books, including one of my own, Cozy Coastal Knits. My resume is available on LinkedIn. My website, First by Designs, features information on publications where my work has appeared. Uh, potential and tentative involvement from yarn companies. Um, to attract an older crowd, Facebook and YouTube, to attract a younger crowd, Instagram and TikTok. Um, living wage, so the budget breaks down 300 for the artist, 100 for marketing, 100 for yarn, um, self-funded if necessary. Every town or cultural district that wants to participate would have to pitch in $500 to cover the expense of the installation. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that's TBD. She is applying to all local arts councils in Massachusetts, which alone is a pretty ambitious thing to do. And as she says, there's no way to coordinate this application process. Um, she includes a picture of a small yarn bombing project for a local arts event, which is one bicycle. And I wish that she would have had a larger scale yarn bombing than a single bicycle, to be honest with you, because I was really, I was really enjoying the spirit of this. It doesn't, obviously it's a little bit outside of our normal uh, purview just in terms of having a location and such but i think the concept you know lends itself to a little flexibility on on our part um anyway that's enough out of me thoughts i feel like it's kind of up to us like if we want immers to get yarn bombed we have to act we have to act now or it ain't gonna happen <laughs> you know so that's that's the question. How badly do we want Amherst to be yarn bombed? 
It doesn't appear that she'll do it for partial funding. I I kind of have to step back and kind of think, well, I think it's super fun and just, you know, can just be such a happy thing. Um, I, I don't know that if the community of Amherst was spending the money, they'd say that they would forgo something else to have this. It's like, it's delightful, even if it is vandalism on a level, you know, um, I mean, I, I, from the industry point of view, I'm like, oh, is it, is it, you know, are these sustainable materials that'll biodegrade? God forbid, don't yarn bomb with acrylic, you know, <laughs> but I, I just don't know that there's enough public benefit, you know, versus other organizations and, 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 and what they're going to do with 500 and I'm, I'm a textile person. So, you know. That's an interesting point, Julian. It's almost like something that, um, you know, people who frequent, is it webs? What is that yarn store called in Northampton? Or do you know the people who are yeah, in I know which one craft you're could crowdfund potentially for something like this? I mean, it's definitely art, um, but I, I, I just, I just don't know. I'm, I'm very, mm, I'm conflicted myself. We have 10 seconds on this one. I, so as much as I'm delighted by the application, I personally am going to advocate to not fund it. Um, I don't think it brings adequate public benefit. And I, I'm persuaded by your, your statement, Julianne, of, you know, are, who are we going to take $500 away from? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and since they've applied to every other cultural council, you know, it's, somebody's going to do it. I just don't, you know, with, with a hundred grants and um, no more funding than we've had prior years. I just don't, I just don't see the public benefit and I, that I take it away from someone else. Anyone feel terribly disappointed about that? It's like well, I pop some of this balloon. I feel only mildly, but I think that you're making very rational good points. I just am very amused and intrigued by this and would love to see it in person. But I understand that I can probably manage that without it being funded by the Cultural Council. Yeah, it, sh <laughs> it should be a grassroots kind of thing where people just get out there and just do it, really. That's how <laughs> we're in the, yeah, the, the anarchist spirit of it, too. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah, what if she yeah. would have, if she would have had a picture of like a car that she had yarn bombed or like a big tree but like one bicycle i think that's that, that is actually the thing that that pushed me away from it you know like it's very ambitious to email all of us but you know anyway um i think that's i think i think we're pretty much at consensus on that one and we're at time as well um Thank you all. I think we're going to have to reevaluate time because we're only one third of the way through. I had, sorry, I'm, can, can you just let me clarify for us, please, going forward? Mm -hmm. Because I thought these meetings were going until 7 p.m. in the doodle poll. Is that incorrect? So it's they're going until 6 I thought they were supposed to go to 7 p.m. Not the two hours that Angela's been doing, but that we were going to cap them in an hour and a half, not two hours. Uh, and everyone who known me for any amount of time knows that I advocate to keep these short but it, it is supposed to be 90 minutes um, okay all right you, you know I just remember you've been you've been such a staunch advocate for the one hour meeting I I forgot we just I, I can go to seven if others can yeah I mean we've cut them down to five <clears throat> five let's minutes. just take a poll can others go to seven I can okay all right we Thanks, will keep them going you know what's <laughs> Um, okay, number 35. This is Robert Friedman, My Mama and the Full Scale Invasion. July or August, I will know before November 1st. I, I don't think we have anything in the inbox about that, but we could double check. Uh, the location will be Ape Theater, Northampton Center for the Arts. Um, total budget is 9,900. Grant request from us is 800. Uh, 200 projected served, 200 people projected served. My Mama and the Full Scale Invasion by U Ukrainian woman playwright Sasha De Denisova tells the story of a Ukrainian daughter trying to get her mother out of Kiev during the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 22. Mother and daughter move back and forth in time to explore their 
at times difficult relationship. Through missile attacks, drones, stuffed peppers, pickles, Zelensky, Putin, and Joe Biden, surreal portrayals, fantasy, reality, comedy, and tragedy, ultimately conveying a story of defiance, resistance, and a mother and daughter's love for each other. In applying for this grant, I know the deadline is October 17th. I'm waiting for specific information from the Ape Theater at the NCFA. Dates for my rental and fees. This information is forthcoming. I will supply all information then. Uh, this person, I'm going to pause for a second to say, this person clearly read our description and is clearly being conscientious about that. Um, so we'll check the inbox to see if anything came in from them. But regardless, I, you know, I think we should all note the conscientiousness. <laughs> um, hopping over to the uh, panel book or the PDF. Um, target audience is general adult population. Cost for ticket charge is $25 in general. Um, seniors and students, 22. Uh, there is an articulation of the value of, you know, um, telling a, a story about the Ukraine conflict. Um, Robert Friedman is has a resume here listed as a, you know, 1991 Best Director, Community Drama Festival, 20-year Arena Civic Theater board member, taught acting at UMass. Um, Eugene Warner, the scene designer, is designed for many local productions. Jonathan Wyman is a lighting designer. So pretty accomplished group. Uh, other individuals or organizations that will contribute include Spindrift Theater, um, Promotional, a lot of a lot of ideas for promotion. The budget is uh, is ninety nine hundred, as I said. Salaries and fees for artists and human um, for artists. Salaries and fees for two different groups of artists. Uh, equipment rental, so you know, pretty comprehensive budget for a comprehensive theater performance. They project to bring in about seven thousand in ticket sales, um, and then and then they say, if I get a grant or grants, I will apply for funding. OK, um, if I get an amp, if I get a grant or grants, I will apply for funding from the Community Foundation of Western Mass through a sponsorship. Maybe they have a matching partnership that I'm not aware of. Um, if I get an Amherst Arts Council grant, I can seek sponsors, including Florence. Oh, interesting. Florence Bank, East Hampton Savings Bank. APE is a nonprofit and has agreed to give me a letter as to our partnership as possible sponsors. Um, so they donations can go to the APE directly. Possible money would defray my cost of the APE theater. Um, Robert Freeman will pay only, it. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but to move things along, the only knock I see against it, um, provided that you know the date and location is it, it can be confirmed as they intended to do, is that it's not an Amherst. But I it, that's not even an issue because I do believe that people would travel. You know, did, did you check the, the inbox? Hmm? Did you check the inbox? I'm not going to get into that right right this moment. Even even if they haven't written to us yet about it and we have to ask them, I'm still happier with this grantee who communicated out that I'm trying. I, the, I, I you know, this deadline's now and um I don't have it yet. At least they know they need it. So they're in better standing with me than those who just said sometime in spring. Okay. All, all we have in the inbox is a phone call from him. So he's, you know, he's reaching out, trying to communicate. So we'll definitely follow up with him. Is there anyone who wouldn't support fully funding it under good, you know, all criteria is met? Are any, any concerns? Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I support it as well. Wow, perfect timing too. Why's that? Well, we exactly had time for that one. So do we have time to go longer still or no? On that one, no. I mean oh, okay. Okay. the five Got minutes it. for that one. I lost That's what I meant. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Um all right. So I will I'll make a note to follow up with uh him, but I think it sounds great. Okay, number 36 is Andrew Friedman, Flow at the Farmer's Market, which we've um, certainly seen before. Dates are May 11th and 18th, 2024 at the Farmer's Market. Um, total budget cited is $300. Grant request is $300. Um, 
This is two three-hour sessions introducing the flow arts to people at the farmer's market. Flow arts are multidisciplinary performance art combining influences of dance, circus art, and several mindful movement practices. We're a participatory event to move people beyond being observers slash audience, become participants creators, bringing new people into the practice of personal creativity. Farmer's Market is a perfect place to introduce people to this new and exciting art form because flow adds to the festive community atmosphere of any community gathering. Um, I will also say we've funded them in the past and I'll also say that um, they were a block party participant and uh, generally very popular and friendly. Um, Joseph, yeah. So these are these are folks that we've worked with in the past and and have been good partners. And in fact, they have a great flyer that shows some of the juggling activities they've had. So I'll open it up for discussion. I love this. Last year we were like juggling, hell yeah. <laughs> Contortion. All right. What are we, no, I mean it's 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 so much fun. Looks like we don't need five minutes for this. A... Okay. Say again. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, okay, so I have them down for a full fund. Um, and I'm gonna go on to number 37. This is Friends of the Mount Holyoke Range Inc. Um, this is a familiar one to us. It's the Summit House Sunset Concert Series. They have dates confirmed July 11th, 18th, 25th, and August 1st at Skinner State Park. Their overall budget is $7,450. they are asking for $600 from us. Um, I'm not going to read the whole uh, project description just because this is a pretty well-known um, partner with us, but it's you know very well-produced and high-quality music. Tickets are $12 per person in advance, which is in $15 a day of the show. Um, rare opportunity for area residents to enjoy live local music at the Summit House at the top of uh, Mount Skinner. Um, local musicians and three decades as popular series has presented many things. <laughs> I'm not going to read it all. Um, let me see. So budget is, as I said, 7,450 overall. Um, more than half of that goes to directly to musicians, um, you know, also professional sound, overtime pay for, you know, DCR staff. Um, majority of the income required to complete the project comes from ticket sales online at the at the gate. They're also applying to the MCC Festival and Projects Program, which we've um, been a part of for a couple of years now. And they've applied to the Hadley and South Hadley Cultural Councils as well. So I will open us up for a discussion. I'm I'm a big fan, although I have to confess, for some reason I haven't actually attended this. I've always loved it, but has anybody actually gone? I I haven't, but it sounds like the and I've I've heard great things from other folks. I need to stop being so lame. Yeah, I've this only been to the park, lame. not to the concert. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's such a beautiful spot. I've been to the park many times. I've never but I've never made it. This will be my summer to go because it, it really does sound amazing. And you know, Sylvia, and they, have the, they have the oh, dates. Gladly. They have the dates, so you can mark them now. Yeah, mark the dates now, which is a wonderful. <laughs> thing. What, what? That's one reason I really want the dates is so that we, I can go to this stuff. So that's that's great. Um, what's they asked us for? What was it eight? Uh, they asked us for 600. six. Wow, six hundred. Yeah. So I think that's. I mean, I think that's something that we should really try to fully fund if we can, right? Okay. Yes. All right, I will move on to number 38. This is Sean Fullerton, um, Creek Alley, a tribute to American folk music and 1960s folk rock. Thursday, May 30th, 2024 at the Bangs, very specific. Uh, total budget is $450, all of which coming from us. Um, projected number serve, 45. Creek Alley, featuring Sean Fullerton and Dan Kerouac, will present a one-hour music pro program of traditional American folk music and flower power folk rock of the 60s. Uh, along with a bit of humor, we will include educational information between songs. Um, Creek Alley will present the program with a professional sound system, a variety of acoustic guitars and tight harmonies. 
Now, this is at the bangs. Is this specific to the senior center or is it just a general um, geared toward middle agers and seniors and others as space and interest warrants? Well, the 55 to 80 demographic will be most familiar with the selections. It is anticipated that younger patrons will enjoy the program as well. Free performance. Um, do they have a letter? Oh, uh, Council, of Age Council on Aging Staff is involved in the planning of this program. And there's a support letter from them, which is wonderful. Um, I'm having a flashback to last year where Haley Bolton, I think, wrote letters for the majority of our applicants. Haley is the director of our senior senior um, services department, really wonderful uh, department. So I think last year we had to really take into consideration how many things supported by them were, were being promoted or were we funding. Um, but it's hard to argue against this project. It's a wonderful project. I'd like to add that the folk music is kind of a different thing that hasn't been offered as as much, and I think will be appreciated. You know, certainly by their their target audience. Um, although I I still have the concerns as far as would the same performance be, you know, have a much larger audience at a location other than the banks and provide more public benefit. Um, And that might be a bigger discussion to have around the quality of our, you know, senior services facilities in general. I mean, when it's at the bangs, it's it's available and open to the public. I just I just don't know that the public attends as if it was uh, held somewhere other than the senior center. Um, we're out of time on this one. Okay, well, I will mark them down as a, you know, full fund if we can at $450. $450. And I'll move on to number 39. This is James Gert, A Simple Circle, The Democratization of Photography and Its Impact on Society. This is uh, Photography 2324 TBD at the Amherst Public Library. Total budget is 2000 asking us for $1,000. Um, and let's see, I'm not going to read the entire history of photography. Um, okay, let me jump into the PDF. Sometimes folks put all their information in the in the summary. Sometimes it's it's trickles throughout. Um, let's see. This gentleman is certainly a very accomplished photographer. Um, I've worked with the archives at the George Eastman House for my research. Um, and then he lists three websites, which I have not looked at yet. So we might need to look at those. If we don't have more info in this PDF, we do not. So before I do it, has anybody gone to those websites? I mean, I think the real question here is just to make sure this person is a, is everything he says that he is and, and, you know, but it sounds yeah. impressive. Um, is there a letter of support from the Jones? Cause the dates are so broad. There's not, that's yeah. another. So that and with the construction would be my my main concern here mm -hmm. because one, I mean, on the one hand that the the gallery is such a, a special place and I think it's it, it would behoove us to fund things so that more people are enjoying it. However, I don't know where it is with the building project. And if someone's assuming that they're going to exhibit there um, clearly it's, it's, uh, there are a lot more limitations on, on accessing right now. So I just want to be sure it can happen because it sounds super cool. And if all things were normal, I'd want to, you know, push people to in, in, enjoy, um, specifically art at the Jones. Yeah, that's, that's, those are exactly my concerns. All right. I, I'm, and also it's hard for me to those links are not easy to click on. <laughs> so um, I'm going to Google this person just for the sake of, you know, a little bit of due diligence, I guess. Um, G -E -H -R -T. Just to pick on Christy, who lives in the art world so much, I'd love to hear what you, you make of this one. Oh, Matt's digging. Um, yeah. Oh, that good, huh? The work is beautiful. Um, something different, though, you know. It's not. It's not our usual funding stuff. 
No, it's really not. And, and the, I mean, I'm not, we don't have time for me to screen share, but I would encourage folks to check out James Gert photo, you know, photo.com. It really is extraordinary work. So, you know, we have almost two minutes. If you want to quickly screen share. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll screen share for a second, but I, I think before I do, I think I feel like the quality of this. And as Christy said, host to sit, I thought I was the host. If I, I, it says I can't share my screen. Well, we might not be able to do that then. Yeah. Okay. Well, it says uh, Christy is the host. I don't, I don't know why, but that's what it says. Oh, really? Christy. Really? Christy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Christy, um, hold, on. Able... hold on. Hold on. <laughs> that's funny. There you I, go. I, given that this is a unique, as Christy said, we don't typically, oh, I'm the host now. Okay. We don't typically um, do this you know, photography, and it really is extraordinary um, art. Uh, you know, I, I think it's worth reaching out to um, James Gert and just asking him if he's, made, you know, has he made any outreach to the Jones and secured, you know, secured the space before we make a decision? Um, you know, because I, I think not only is it really beautiful work, but it's also historically you know i mean the like the technical list technical history work that he's doing here is is pretty extraordinary as well it also looked like he was taking photos of local museums i think like just documenting it, like the emily dickinson and stuff at mm -hmm. least i thought that's what it was um i thought that was pretty cool like you know, putting back into other cultural organizations true so so I, I think I'll, I'll reach out to him. I, I mean, it's, you know, it's too interesting not to, not to at least learn a little bit more, I think. Um, okay. So, but I'm, I'm not gonna, I mean, he's asking for a thousand. I think we just, we're gonna have to rediscuss. rediscuss. Um, Put it down for a, a partial. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Okay, number 40 is Andrew Grant. Project title, First Contact and the Roots of Violence in This Valley. Uh, six times over the course of 2024, actively seeking program time in local venues, a list of libraries, independent bookstores, and religious councils. So we will be actively seeking those things. Total budget, 5,000 requesting 2,500 from us, projected our target number served, 275. Okay, um, Dr. Edward Tick, a Belchertown resident who is an archetypal therapist with a focus on healing the wounds of war, and Andrew Grant, a Williamsburg resident who is a Quaker peace activist with a recognized concern for indigenous relations, will dialogue about their chapters in a forthcoming anthology, Revisioning the American Psyche, Jungian archetypal and mythological reflections. Community conversations will occur in three venues, local libraries, independent bookstores, and religious councils. A chapbook of the writing, see a non-circulating preview below, will be given to participants and relevant regional cultural organizations. Signed copies will be available for sale. All right, so I will hop into the PDF here. Um, Let's just take a look at the budget. Uh, free of charge to the public. So basically the funds would go to the presenters and to guest panelists and production costs, chap, chap book productions by Levelers Press. Uh, this grant application is the sole income source. Um, to, if you apply to other local councils, um, two large towns plus two small. So Amherst 25, Northampton 25, Belchertown 650, Williamsburg 650. And there's a CV for Dr. Edward Tick and a resume for Andrew Grant. I, I do need to check on partial or not on partial on prior year um, grants and whether we did get the final grant report before last time. So I can tell you that Andrew Grant won an award from us a few years ago for a for a public dialogue related to the powwow, 
and it was in a reimbursement bottle. And he submitted a letter saying that they were not going to be doing their maybe maybe that's what I had. But it was and it was it wasn't nearly as you know completed of a project as this. I mean, this is an actual chapter in a book versus that was a that was gonna be a facilitated dialogue. What do folks think about this? Does anybody want to either A, fully fund it, or B, deny it outright? Excuse me. Hmm. Is it in our wheelhouse? If so, it's, you know, within the humanities sort of realm and has cultural benefit, but I, you know, certainly doesn't have a particularly an artistic lens to it. But, but you know, we, we have a broad, broad mandate, so we, we yeah. fund historical things. Yeah. Partial. If we're so hesitant, I'd say partial. I, I would vote for a low partial, personally. I think I agree with Rachel and Christy on this. Um, yeah, me too. I'm just not totally sure. I, I guess, is it more like presentation on the book or more conversation? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not totally sold on it, but I don't see anything that's like, it doesn't fit. Um, I'm just not convinced. Yeah, right. It, it's, it's one that it would be hard to deny, and I don't think we should necessarily deny it. Um uh still going back to just why we why they weren't able to complete their event previously. I have them looking at the email now. I, I'm very um, familiar with the whole with the story. It you know is is a good faith. I I don't think there's anything to hold against them in, in that occasion. I, I'm okay. Uh we're kind of on time. So I guess we'll need to come back to it, but it sounds like we need to, Matt, you're going to reach out to get more information. And no, also... I think we're, I think we're just pretty much at a low partial. I, you know, I think the information is here. I mean, <laughs> have to, might need Sorry, to be there, uh, but there aren't actual dates and there are, isn't an actual location. So I'm not okay with a low partial still without those things. Okay. I mean, I think it's a, Hmm? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm this sure is just this across the have... board for everyone. I, I don't think we can do direct grants, you know, without knowing that it's actually, I mean, I, I believe it. I think it'll happen, but we just need that across the board for anybody who didn't have it. So it's a lot of work. Okay. Um, well, I, I, my, my sense is that we're going to get an answer of no if we ask them if they have, if they, you know, since since they submitted this, do they have specific dates and times? My sense is that the answer is no, and that it probably isn't worth an outreach to find that out. So, I mean, we can come back to it at the end and, and make the final decision then, but but I think that's kind of what we're looking at. But I, I take your point. I mean, it's a, it certainly is no fun trying to chase down money for things that don't get completed either. And we, we've really got to set the tone up front as someone who's been chasing down final grant reports for people who got checks. I mean, I've had people come back and, and say, I, I turned it down when they didn't, when they actually, they, they don't even remember getting the money. And they're like, I, you know, so it's it's been pretty maddening. So um, I think we we absolutely need to send a message early on. I think we need to, to fire a shot over grantees' bowels right now to say, hey, um, we're deliberating, but we don't have these details from you. Um, and, and better that they should know sooner. I think in the past, we had a low, lower volume of total grants and Gigi was amazing and could reach out to everyone, but we, we weren't having to reach out the same way then before the direct granting. And I, I think we just do a form, you know, that gets BCC'd to all of them that that are lacking, you know, dates, location, or both, and and get ahead of this. 
Julian, since you're raising that now, and since I'm starting to take over as treasurer, I think that was something I, I actually wanted to bring up is that for people who haven't turned in their grant reports from the last cycle, do they automatically disqualify themselves for consideration for this grant cycle? That was a question that I think we might want to discuss, you know, maybe at the end of this grant cycle. I don't know at what point that um, conversation should happen, but since you brought it up, I, I just want to raise that now. I don't know so, if we have time for one more, like or not today, but. I, I fully agree that that's a criteria that we, you know, we have a response, a fiscal responsibility to uh, to check that. And, and I can let everyone know that there has been a tremendous amount of communication out throughout the year to chase down final grant reports. So while I wouldn't say it, it would be automatic, you know, I think we'll have to look at the circumstances, you know, we've, we've worked very hard on outreach and, and if we don't have something solid from folks, then they, they must be denied. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think your strategy is good it is basically we just need to go back through and, you know, cut and paste this piece of language here to all, everybody that we're considering, everybody that we haven't ruled out, you know, um, and just, and just let them know that, hey, this, you know, this was clear here and we, we simply cannot um, issue your grant without a confirmed venue and date, you know. Yeah. And I mean, so we'll, we'll, we'll be reasonable. If somebody wants to do six performances at the farmer's market, we don't, you know, it, like that's not the kind of thing that we're going to worry about. But I think this is a good example of where we we do need to. Um, but I think one mass email out to everybody who falls in this category is is really the only way to do it because it's there's too many of them. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, Thank you I'm all. Thanks for staying for the, the long stretch here. We We needed it. Um, we're making great progress. Okay. All right. Good night, y'all. Everyone have a great night. Uh, Bye. can someone stop the recording? Bye. Bye. Well, let's, let's see.